once again the lord has given us an opportunity to go back to the exciting subject that we are studying bibliology what does the bible say about itself but as i reminded you um when we study a subject like bibliology um not only do we cover what does the bible say but we also cover a lot of information related to the bible which is available from outside for example manuscripts what kind of manuscripts are available what did a lot of people do to make bible translations available and all that in our last class i mentioned the uh, septuagint a translation of the hebrew bible hebrew old testament made into greek because by 300 ad or i'm sorry by 400 ad 400 bc lot of jews they did not know their own mother tongue and the greek language had conquered the whole world the way english has conquered today and uh, lot of hebrews they knew only greek so a greek translation was made by 72 scholars two of them died while they were uh, doing their translation and finally 70 people did the translation and that is known as septuagint uh, the 70 once such a translation was made lot of people came forward to do more and more and more translation and uh, Uh, i mentioned the translation by aquila in ad 130 i mentioned the translation by simacus ad 170 i mentioned the translation by theodosian ad 180 and finally in ad 200 a great biblical scholar by the name of origen he felt that since a number of translations are available they would be a great help to people to study the bible and he combined all the available six bibles or six old testaments into one in six columns and in the first column they had hebrew the second column transliteration of the hebrew that means it is hebrew but written in greek letters then he also had septuagint he had aquila he had simacus he also had three theodosian and uh, brothers and sisters a parallel bible is one of the best tools which a bible bible student can have because some words in a given translation might be difficult to understand but consult another translation and what was confusing suddenly becomes clear so this way origen started a process which continues even today i told you the other day that of all the books which are sitting here in the background one of them is a thick english bible and it contains all the available translations in english except for one or two which came after this was made all the translations are there and obviously if all the translations are there the book will be thick like this but they use a very special technique to make a book only this thick but all the translations are represented and i want to remind you if you ask me suppose all the books from your library are taken away you are allowed to have one hindi one english bible and one single tool my answer would be take away everything leave this parallel bible to me it is so useful there is a question whether this is available Uh, for mobile and the answer it is is 
it is not available it is available only in print format and in electronic format it is not available anywhere it's most unfortunate but it is not available in print format and uh, such a useful tool i actually went from pillar to post to get one copy for me and they were selling a single copy for 50000 60000 rupees because it's already out of print and then one person finally found out a copy for something like 7000 or 8000 rupees and he is one of my students he presented it to me so useful it started with oregon now why i gave this background information as i told you when we study biblical subjects often we give one theory second theory third theory it's all a vomiting of data but data becomes useful only when it is interfaced or linked with the real world that is why when i teach you bibliology i also keep on giving you data from church history and also from secular history and last time when i mentioned church history some of you requested that you would like to have church history uh, keep praying for me brothers and sisters lord willing once uh, this is a uh, over once bibliology is over lord willing i will be taking bible prophecy that itself is a very massive subject and once bible prophecy is over lord willing i will come to church history church history is a subject i have loved very much and church history is supposed to be one of the most boring subjects but i want to assure you church history is one of the most exciting subjects when it is presented in the proper way i am preparing for it please pray for me because i am preparing for eschatology i am preparing for uh, dispensations to be taught uh, on mondays after dr sanishrian's present series is over i am also preparing church history these things are not easy brothers and sisters please remember brethren theological institute classes these are not lectures these are not messages these are classes it requires a lot of preparation please pray that god may give me enough grace and enough time and enough health to do all this please pray for dr sanish charyan also that he may also be given grace to prepare subjects that he is teaching so this much about septuagint by translating hebrew old testament into greek with the help of 72 scholars they started a trend and that trend has helped jews first and christians after that and the trend continues last week the last thing i mentioned was mesorates and i want to tell you mesorates actually they are not christians they are jews but every christian who is serious about studying the bible and about the bible should feel greatly obliged to this group of jews known as mesorates the whole uh, mesorates are actually a group a group of people who decided that their entire life shall be devoted to copying the old testament they were jews they were working for jews and please remember though jews are away from lord even today jews are the people of god and the scripture reminds us to pray for jews mesorates are devoted to jews to copy the old testament this uh, copying official copying phenomenon started when god said 
keep the original copy inside the tabernacle but at the same time god also said read it to each other god also said memorize it so the jews immediately realized that they have to make copies and therefore jews started making copies of the available old testament books and by ad bc 400 they were copying all the 39 books which we have in our bible this process of copying started in 1500 bc but after about 900 years it took a formal audiogiga formal it it became a formal practice i hope you remember around bc 600 the people of god went into captivity daniel and all that then once they went into captivity, 70 years passed and Jews who were in Babylon, they were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. But once they went back to Jerusalem, their mother town, the house of God, it was lying in ruins. And to lot of things happen when Jews, not all, but a lot of Jews return to their motherland. The first return was under the leadership of Zerubbabel. The second return was under the leadership of Ezra. The third return was under the leadership of Nehemiah. Of all these three, Ezra is also known as Ezra the scribe. In Malayalam, he is widely known as Ezra Shastri. And we know what a scribe is. A scribe is a person who has devoted himself to copy, like stenographers or typists. Biblical scribes were people who devoted their entire life to copy biblical manuscripts. Copying biblical manuscripts was a common practice from the time Moses, God uses Moses to write the first five books and also the book of uh, Job. But under Ezra the scribe, it started becoming a formal process. That is why the biblical book identifies him as Ezra the scribe. And their purpose was to conserve the integrity of the Old Testament books. Why conserve the integrity? Because by the time of Ezra, it became clear that the original manuscripts were copied once, then people made copies of copies, then people made copies of copies. And eventually, by the time of Ezra, many of the copies made by common people Please remember, Jews were really literate people. So many of the copies made by common people, they contained a lot of errors. And that is the reason why Ezra gave it a formal form. He established a school of scribes. When I say school of scribes, I'm using the word school in a different sense. Usually, when we think of schools, we think of uh, schools where our children go and study from nursery up to plus two. That is one name for one usage of the word school. But uh, I want to remind you that the word school is used in other senses also, and I'm using in the other sense. For example, I did my MSc and also PhD, PhD physics from one of the most prestigious institutions in India. But it is known as school, not college. 
the full name is school of advanced studies and research in physics so please keep in mind when i i use the word school i am not talking about nursery school alone that is one meaning another meaning is uh, uh, the way in which my university college is named the school of studies there is another sense in which the word school is used and that is a collection of scholars devoted to one particular task so when ezra established a school of scribes that was an institution of higher education where all the nuances of the greek hebrew language was taught you may say why nuances that also should be clear to us today when we pick up a book we will find that the book is divided into chapters actually some of the most massive books are divided first into sections not even chapters sections for example the malayalam systematic theology which dr sanish chiriyan and i and two others wrote that is divided into 10 sections so the moment you look at the section you know what that section is about inside the section there are chapters in the bible also we have two sections today the old testament the new testament each one of them is divided into books each one of them is then divided into chapters and chapters are divided into verses and verses are often verses have comma apostrophe then colon semicolon full stop not only do verses have such marks verses also have words separated from each other the times when the old testament was written there was nothing like that all what they had was books and even books some of them were not divided for example first king and second king first chronicles and second chronicles first samuel second samuel they were not there they were all a single manuscript number 1 number 2 these books did not have chapters number 3 so a scribe could not say i opened up to such and such portion such and such book such and such chapter such and such verses chapters were not there verses were not there so after a scribe copied up to a certain portion and please remember they were listening to a person who was reading he could not mark on his bible uh the uh, jews never put marks on their bibles the way we do so he would just remember in his mind in the beginning ah okay the next portion from which i have to start is in the beginning uh, it's used not only in the in genesis it can be it might be used somewhere else so the next day he comes and opens the scroll and he comes to in the beginning and he starts dictating without realizing that on the same page in the beginning has come more than once and therefore now he is repeating what he had said yesterday mistakes could happen there were no chapters and let me tell you one thing the old testament manuscripts did not have chapters did not have verses not only that they did not have full stops 
so there was no idea there was no indication that a sentence has stopped and a new sentence has started oh you may say brother there must definitely be commas and other no the old testament manuscripts they had only books they did not have chapters they did not have verses they did not have full stops they did not have colons or semicolons they did not have commas i am not finished they did not have vowels so if they have to write adam it will be a d m in english if they have to write it is g d well you may say at least since those words were separated from each other they could make out and there comes the catch words were not separated from each other pick up genesis and the first letter start from the first letter of genesis and if you go up to the last chapter last statement there was no word division today our bibles have word division our languages have our scripts have word division and then words are also separated with the help of comma semicolon colon full stop and in bible we also have verses nothing existed and to make matters more complex the hebrew language did not have capital or small cases everything was capital only just imagine the predicament of people who were copying it so since it was necessary for people to memorize the bible individuals were copying from manuscripts of others that was not easy everything was in capital there was no word division there was no comma there was no full stop no verses so they were making a lot of mistakes and some of the mistakes they made according to their level i still remember a dictation so a teacher it was a mixed class say bible class so the teacher said i see a b so the older guy he realized it is talking about a honey bee so he wrote it properly i see a b but one of the persons who are sitting there with a diary was a an lkg student lower kg student he also came with the diary so when he heard the di dictation i see a b he wrote i the english letter i the english letter c the english letter a and the english letter b you ask him to read it he will read it i c a b he heard it he copied according to his understanding similar problems came up when during the old testament people were making their own copies for the sake of reading the bible and memorizing and i also want to remind you that as jews became more affluent writing material became very common they became cheap they were produced in plenty and uh, by the time of uh, exile when the jews went into slavery around 600 bc another writing material became available and that is papyrus the english word paper comes from papyrus now uh, people of kerala are in a good condition to understand what papyrus is i hope all of you remember our fathers and forefathers used to have what is known as pai ordinary pai metta pai they were made of a 
plant the long leaves of a plant oru size kaideda ele eduthe ad unakiyarnallo paay undakkunnathu same approximately same family or a similar family they had leaves and by the time israelites went into exile these leaves they used to take these leaves and weave them dry them polish them and make writing material that was known as papyrus that is why today we use the word paper because papyrus is the forefather of paper i am sure if if there is anyone here who has come from tamil nadu or andhra pradesh uh you are aware um of a coconut like tree that you have in tamil nadu and also in andhra pradesh the leaves are all joined with each other and those leaves were used many many years ago today i i haven't seen them for many years they used to use these leaves for making fans and also for making caps those leaves were used in kerala for writing particularly when a child would go to the gurukul for learning aie the guru used to write on that kind of leaves malayalam pana english date trees not exactly date uh, it's the same family that's all once this kind of material became available even poorer jews could afford writing material that multiplied the problem because a child who is learning say who has come to the 10th year of his schooling he he feels he should memorize the bible so using papyrus he would make his copies but a lang but a, a manuscript which had no chapters which had no verses which had no separate sentences which had no full stop which had no comma which had no colon or semicolon and a language which had only capital letters but which had no alphabet and where all the letters were together there was no separation at all naturally when a child makes a copy he would make a mistake the adult understands that i c a b means i have seen a honey bee and the child thinks these are four letters i the english letter i english letter c english letter a and english letter b this is why people like ezra the scribe felt it necessary to establish schools of scribe where they were taught several things number 1 hebrew language and hebrew grammar number 2 biblical theology number 3 how to write in a beautiful non confusing manner four now listen to this four how to make the pen pens were not available readily they used to take a reed material and shape it into pens and it had to be shaped repeatedly sixth they also had to learn ink making ink was not readily available you may find it very shocking that ink was not available readily but brothers and sisters i want to remind you one thing i am only 68 in my childhood 
ink was not available uh camlin was not there there was a company known as quink and the bottle of quink ink was so expensive just 6 decades ago it was so expensive that we were all making our own ink at home we would go to the shop and buy some tablets bring it home drop in a bottle fill with water shake it keep it overnight then check whether the consistency is all right if it is too concentrated we would add water if it is too dilute we will add more tablets and even those tablets were so costly that our parents were very reluctant to buy us tablets so if 60 years ago if situation was so bad that we had to make our own ink just imagine 2000 600 years ago ink material was not available these ink tablets are made in factories using chemical processes chemistry did not exist at that time chemistry means i kind this kind of a chemistry so great men visionaries like ezra they realized all this and they realized that the integrity of biblical manuscripts have to be preserved and therefore like the bible seminaries they established schools of scribes dedicated to just one task copying biblical manuscripts accurately but in that process ezra gave rise to an institution when i say institution i am not saying organization what i am saying is an ongoing process which kept the bible safe for us and ezra made a lot of restriction at the time of ezra uh before i go to that let me tell you eventually they realize that you cannot copy this kind of a manuscript without a knowledge of the old testament because when there are no alphabets i'm sorry when there are no no vowels i think once or twice instead of vowels i used the word alphabets they had capital alphabet only when there are no vowels in between capital alphabets and when all the alphabets are written one after another without any space between words then an ignorant person if he looks at it he can see number of words which do not exist there so these people had to be experts in old testament history they had to be they had to memorize substantial portions of the bible they also needed to know hebrew old testament theology lots of other things that is why eventually the scribes also became bible commentators at the time of uh, lord jesus christ he was harassed much by pharisees and scribes do you know why pharisees were atheists they considered themselves as a uh, uh, faithful jews but they were actually atheists and what about scribes scribes had devoted their life to copy the old testament but by the time of lord jesus scribes were also expert bible teachers and commentators commentators and therefore they thought oh well it is within our right to, to dictate what the bible teaches uh sometimes i do have memory lapses therefore let me remind once again pharisees sadducees scribes pharisees were people devoted to jewish rituals and everything sadducees were atheists and scribes were people who copied the bible but who were also expert bible teachers this all started because of ezra who started school 
of scribes ezra by from the time of ezra there were also many practices which became very strong at the time of masorets some of the original practices were that to copy the old testament they could use only clean animal skins by clean animal we know in the old testament times many animals were declared as clean many were declared as unclean they could use only clean animal skins to produce the manuscripts and if any kind of stitching was done they had to stitch because to produce a long scroll they had to stitch pieces they could use only um guts of animals or strips of skin taken from clean animals the second rule was each column of writing could have not less than 48 and not more than 60 lines well you may say brother that would be very difficult because uh, somebody if he keeps count he can definitely write more than 48 but suppose after writing 60 lines by mistake he writes one more line then what they did not have rubber they could not they did not have correction fluid and even if they had rubber or correction fluid it was not allowed if a scribe wrote more than 60 lines by accident that portion of the manuscript it became invalid and it was rejected it had to be thrown away they wrote on long strips rolls and these were made by joining smaller strips which would be something like 4 to 5 feet long so if by mistake because of tiredness because of error in counting if he wrote a 61st line by accident that portion that he wrote so meticulously so laboriously became useless and it was rejected and please remember they used to write say 5 to 10 or 20 scribes used to write at the same time with one expert scribe reading the original manuscript the man who read the original manuscript he had to be extremely careful because he was reading a manuscript which had no chapters which had no verses which had no word divisions and which had no vowels without vowels he had to pronounce the words accurately look at their difficulty so this way one person would read 5 to 20 people have to copy and even if you write more one line more than 60 that portion of the manuscript is rejected not only this to keep the integrity safe they had more rules the ink used had to be black and only black made of a special recipe not any kind of black could be used now god motivated these people to do this for our sake because today when a large number of atheists and people who are hostile to the christian faith when they ask us do you have old manuscripts please remember we do have 
the Christian community does have lot of old manuscripts, more than 25,000 to be exact. But these manuscripts are intact today because they used ink of a special recipe and God saw to it that this recipe was so good that the ink would survive for 2,600 years without fading. I'm sure most of you have some of your old notebooks. And I'm sure that all of you have the experience of seeing at least one article, one essay, or one writing that you produced which has faded so much within your lifetime that it is difficult to read what it is. I have a lot of experience. I'm a writer-holic. In spite of using the computer, I write much. And often, it is my experience that something I wrote just five years ago has faded so much that one has to struggle to read what it is. I am able to read only because it is my writing and I know I have a faint memory of what I wrote. I combine that faint memory with whatever mark is available to reconstruct it. I am talking about the 21st century. If 21st century dye-based inks which come from factories fade so fast, why are those 2600 year, year old manuscripts so, uh, so accurate, so clear, and why has the ink not faded? Because God the Holy Spirit guided those people to produce a special kind of ink. And the ink used had to be the ink according to this special recipe. Not finished. As one person who would dictate, and as scribes heard those words, they had to pronounce it aloud as they wrote each word. Why did they have to pronounce it? So that they may not make a mistake. I understand it very well these days. Because in our family prayer, these days, I read the Bible and that also in Malayalam. Though I am a native of Kerala, Malayalam is not my native language. And to get a good grip over the Malayalam of the Bible, for the sake of my teaching ministry, for the last three or four months, I have been using I have been reading the Malayalam Bible aloud in our family, morning and evening, and almost every day, either my wife or my father, they stop me at a given word and ask me to read it again. And I realize that I made a mistake. So whether you are reading or writing, mistakes can happen. And I now see it firsthand. Why? When those scribes had, would copy, they had to loudly pronounce each word as they copied the books. Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not take the name of Lord thy God, Jehovah thy God in vain. And schools of scribes took it so strictly that when the master scribe reads Jehovah, then before copying the word Jehovah, they would wipe the pen, wipe all ink. And then they would go and wash their entire body 
dry themselves come back and write jehova which means that if a given verse verse according to our standards contain the word jehova four times they had to go and take bath four times was it necessary well that is not our question but i want to tell remind you that the scripture did not come to us easily no men had to devote their entire lives to sit in dark rooms by dark i mean no electricity they had to sit there and write following all these protocols not finished once a manuscript was produced it was sent to what is known what in our language what is known as an auditor the auditors would compare the copy with the original if there was one minor mistake they would correct it in the margin and there are hundreds of manuscripts in which we can see this kind of correction because hand copying is a very difficult thing if and and this review had to be done within 30 days if a manuscript was not reviewed within 30 days it was rejected if it was re reviewed within 30 days and if three pages required correction please notice it a manuscript had to be reviewed within 30 days of writing if by any chance if they could not review it that manuscript was rejected while reviewing if three or more pages required correction just spelling correction the entire manuscript had was rejected each scribe had to count the number of letters the number of words and please remember there was no gap between words each scribe had to count the number of letters number of words number of paragraphs and they had to tally it with the master copy usually this was done by the auditors and if there was a discrepancy between the master copy and this copy copy was rejected they had only capital letters but there was one rule each letter must be separate from each other if by mistake if two letters touched each other the manuscript was rejected document was invalid i hope brothers and sisters i hope you remember the times when there were no voting machines if a person put the seal and if the seal touched the line that vote was invalid in the same way these capital letters were all to be separate from each other and if any two letters touched it was rejected no document no biblical document could ever be destroyed which means if they produced a copy which had error even that copy could not be destroyed it had to be rejected but it could not be discovered uh, destroyed so wherever the jews had their synagogues they also had a big storehouse known as the geniza 
if a jewish believer had a bible which had become so old that it was falling apart he could not burn it he could not uh, uh, burn it he could not bury it he could not throw it away it was god's sacred word he had to take it and submit it to the geniza geniza means hiding place and the priest would take it and keep in the geniza each practice which they started eventually gave rise to much blessing in the 20th and 21st century scholars who are looking for copies of the old testament see actually we don't need these copies because the manuscripts even modern manuscripts are very accurate but we go and look for them because people who attack the bible they raise all kinds of attack and one of the latest attacks that has come to me for answering is that uh, from first to fifth centuries christians completely rewrote the old testament manuscripts so how do you answer them you have to go to manuscripts before that day produced before that day so because of attacks finding old manuscripts has become necessary and uh, scholars have found out many many genizas some of them contain hundreds of thousands of biblical manuscripts they are taken they are photoed uh, they are photocopied or they are scanned and then they are made available to scholars worldwide for research today you and i we can have a bible for the asking those who use smartphones they can download so many translations just for the asking go to play store download it please remember countless people countless tens of thousands of people scribes they gave away their lives to do this kind of a thankless back breaking job to make the scripture available to you and me and therefore today when we have all these things and when we study bibliology we should take a little time to thank those great men for their devotion and also for what they have done before i close in my last class i had reminded i had shown this massive volume to you which contains inscriptions from middle east related to the bible or useful for bible scholars and i told you that the book is 70 years old i don't have latest volume because i don't have 50000 rupees to buy a single volume like this but that much material has become available if this much was available 50 years ago just imagine the situation today but i also told you that lot lots and lots and lots of discoveries are there and today i want to show you one volume of a five volume encyclopedia that i have the encyclopedia of archaeological excavations in the holy land this is volume 1 uh, large size this is a five volume work this is 30 years old i cannot buy the present volume the present volume five volumes would cost more than 1 lakh rupees but i'm hanging on to these for my personal studies and also to tell my students worldwide two things number one so much material is available about the reliability of the christian faith that it is mind boggling number two brothers sisters when you so easily go to your almira and pull out a bible 
please remember those men and women yes lot of women are also there who gave away their entire life to preserve it for thousands of years and get it to us accurately i thank god for this opportunity he gave me to share this information with all of you and i'm sure that this information will give you much courage to defend your faith and also much challenge to be committed in your spiritual life